The American Health Journal, bringing you the latest information on medicine, psychology, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Major medical advances are made each week, and each week the American Health Journal keeps you up to date. Hello and welcome to this edition of the American Health Journal. I'm your host, Roger Cooper. Then a fascinating report from the Salk Institute on their research into regenerative medicine. Everyone knows that lizards can regrow their tails if they're lost. Why can't we grow a lost arm? Dr. Juan Carlos Belmonte, professor in the Gene Expression Laboratory at the Salk Institute, is currently conducting research on the possibility for humans to regenerate new limbs. I am a developmental biologist. And developmental biologists, what, what is it that they do? They are trying to understand how an embryo is generated, how from one cell, the only and unique cell that we all are coming from, develop into an adult human being. This process of one cell to million of cells is called development. And I'm trying to understand the genes implicated in that process, in generating an animal or a human being. The key word will be generation, how a structure is generated, how a heart, a limb, an eye, a liver, how is that generated, how you have one cell, two cells, four cells, and they start to be different. At the beginning they are all the same, and how they start to be different when they grow up. So when they grow up they decide to be a liver cell or a heart cell, or a nerve cell. This is a very small fish that is transparent, and we can see the organs inside. If we know how this happens naturally, how a liver cell gets formed, how a liver, the organ, gets formed, then we will know a lot when the liver doesn't work well how to repair it. So we have three types of regeneration. One is restoration. The best example, perhaps, is our blood. Every day we have new blood, new cells that constitute the blood. That's called rather restoration, not regeneration, restoration. There's this other type of regeneration, the liver regeneration, where you don't restore the form. You restore some cells, but not the original form. And there is the most amazing one, the one that you do everything. This one that you can find in salamanders, some fish, that you cut their limbs, you cut their heart, you cut their spinal cord, and they bring it back. And they bring it the right size, no longer, no shorter, the right way, no up, not upside down, just the right way. There is regeneration in humans, uh, babies, for the first few months of life, if something happened that the their fingers get cut, they will regenerate their fingers. So regeneration is present in a human being in a very limited window, not through all their life, but is present. The fact that it's present tells you that perhaps we will be able to see that in an adult human being. So the answer is, if the ability is there, then it could be yes. But we don't know how. For that, we need to use animal models. Models that there is no regeneration, like in humans, and try to awake that ability. We have been able to show that an animal, like a chick, that does not regenerate. You cut the wing of a chick and it's like us, it will not regenerate. We can induce the limb to regenerate by manipulating the genetic content of that structure. So the ability to regenerate is there, is present in higher animals. I feel we are far away. I don't think we should give any false expectatives not in, only in this field, but also in the field of stem cell biology.
generation is what we're trying to understand. Regeneration is the implications of that work. 